If you pick a point on any circle and follow that point as the circle rolls along a straight line, the curve it traces out is called a cycloid. The name cycloid was conceived by Galileo. In 1599, he attempted to find the area under the curve by tracing both it and the circle onto sheet metal. He then cut them out and weighed them, and what he discovered was that their ratio was exactly 3 to 1. This means if the area of a circle is pi r squared, then the area under the cycloid it generates is 3 pi r squared. Cycloids have some interesting properties when you place them in the physical world. If you invert two cycloids and suspend a pendulum between them that is half their length, the path of its swing will also be a cycloid. Also, if you break a cycloid in half, then release a ball to roll down it like a ramp, this is the exact shape which allows the ball to descend the ramp in the shortest time. So what if we want to find the equation of a cycloid? How do we do it? Let's start by placing the circle that generated the cycloid right about here. This will allow us to visualize the relationships between the variables in play here. Let's imagine this on the Cartesian plane with the cycloid starting at the y-axis. The point on the circle that is tracing out the curve will be x, y. This is our primary focus. We want to find the relationship between x and y that describes this curve. To do that, let's start with the radius of the circle that generates the cycloid. That will always be the distance from the center of the circle to the ground. Let's also draw a line straight down from our point x, y. This represents the height of the point at any given moment, which is simply the y-coordinate. And the distance to that line from the y-axis is the x-coordinate. If we make a right triangle here, and let the base of the triangle be a, then this line segment must also be a. Therefore, we can call the total distance the circle has rolled x plus a. This distance must also be equal to the arc length of the circle. And the arc length of any circle is equal to the measure of the angle that traces out that arc times the radius of that same circle. So this distance is r theta, which means x plus a is r theta. And if we solve for x, we get x equals r theta minus a. For y, we can break it into two smaller segments, one of which we know is equal to the radius, and the other one, let's call it b for now. So y is equal to b plus r, or r plus b. We now have a set of parametric equations. The parameter in this case is theta. But what about a and b? Remember that the angle the circle has rotated up to this point is theta. This part is a right angle, or pi over 2 radians. So if we subtract pi over 2 from theta, that will be the angle inside this triangle. Also remember we called the legs of this triangle a and b. The sine of the angle, theta minus pi over 2, is the opposite side over the hypotenuse, which is b over r. We can simplify this trigonometric function. Look at these two graphs. If you notice, for the sine function, if you subtract pi over 2 from theta, it shifts the graph over like this. This is identical to what would happen if we flipped the cosine function vertically. So sine of theta minus pi over 2 is equal to negative cosine theta. That gives us a simpler equation. We can solve for b by multiplying by r. Plug that in, and we have y equals r minus r cosine theta. Now let's take the cosine of our angle. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is a over r. Again, we can simplify this. If we change the cosine function by subtracting pi over 2, it'll shift it like this. This is identical to the sine function as it is. So the sine of theta is equal to cosine of theta minus pi over 2. So this simplifies to sine theta equals a over r. Solve for a and plug this in, and here we go. The parametric equations for a cycloid.
We could plug in any radius to change the size of the curve. You might be wondering, is there just one equation for a cycloid? And the answer is yes. Although it's not an explicit equation, we can get it pretty close. What we want to do is eliminate the parameter theta. This is usually done by solving one of the equations for theta, and then plugging that into the other equation. However, if we try to solve for theta with the top one, it'll be impossible. One of these thetas is trapped inside the sine function while the other one isn't. We can't just factor them out. But we can solve for theta with the bottom one. Just add r cosine to the other side and subtract y. Then divide by r. We'll come back to this, but first let's finish solving for theta by using the inverse cosine function. That'll give us the first part. Now let's use this information to construct a right triangle with angle theta. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. We can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for a. b is the other leg, r minus y, and c is the hypotenuse, r. Square the r minus y by foiling, then cancel out the r squared that's on both sides. Now move the other terms to the opposite side and take the square root. That gives us a. So the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Now plug that in and cancel out the r's. And now we have the equation of a cycloid. Actually, no. We ended up losing a little bit of information when we eliminated the parameter theta. This equation only describes half of the cycloid. But we can fix that by subtracting pi. This will shift the graph over by that much. Then we can let x be positive or negative. That'll cover both sides of the y-axis. We could also use the absolute value of x instead, which is what I prefer. Like I said, this is not an explicit equation. We can't solve all the way for x without losing some information, but the absolute value gets us pretty darn close. So finally, here is the equation of a cycloid. I really hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. I'm working hard to make quality content with clear explanations and helpful animations. If you enjoy what I've created so far, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you all for watching and have a pleasant day. Shh. <laughs>